Lawrence, welcome to the show. Can you just tell us a bit about your life before Human Centipede um, wriggled its way into it? Yes. Yeah. Well, um, uh, I'd been, uh, I'd come from a fine art background and studied uh, performance art and perform artists that I knew uh, that I was working with uh, whilst at college. They started doing uh, characters on children's TV in the in the UK. This is like the mid-90s. Um, so I started doing uh, children's TV, Saturday morning shows, doing characters on that, usually gnomes or little old men or <laughs> uh, the little green man uh, on Parallel 9. That was the uh, kind of semi-famous one. Uh, and then, um, uh, and then, so I had a, a brief brush with fame, and then it all kind of ended. And I ended up doing a lot of theatre in London, uh, and doing adverts. And then the bo bottom fell out of the advertising market. I uh, ended up using up all my savings just to keep afloat in London, and then uh, eventually had to move back to my parents. Uh, and then, about a year after that, the Human Centipede 2 came along. I got the call from... How did it come to you? Well, uh, Tom was looking for... Um, Tom Six, the director. Tom Six, the director, yeah. yeah. He he was looking for actors that were physically the opposite of Dieter. Uh, Dieter Laser from the first film, he's mm. uh, tall and thin and... And German. And German, and I'm none of those things. So, uh, so, so yeah, so... Um, I I think he saw about sort of six or seven people, and uh, I was the seventh or eighth the one that he saw, and we got on like a house on fire. So. I have a challenge for you. <coughs> really? So we need <coughs> you to describe what is, without question, Lawrence, the most original and repulsive <laughs> series of horror films. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you describe them in G-rated terms for yeah. us? Well, I mean, the, the central concept of the Human Centipede films uh, was introduced in the first one, uh, um, and that's the joining together of people uh, to, so that they share an alimentary canal, uh, uh, one digestive tract, as it were, which has connotations which uh, aren't G-rated, so uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll move swiftly on to uh, part three, which... Uh, <laughs> Uh, part, you know, part one was a fairly traditional mad scientist film. Part two, uh, a lot of people, uh, a lot of horror fans, sort of complained that it wasn't gory. Part one wasn't gory, wasn't uh, it wasn't uh, scary. So part two is much more harder, scarier, darker, and gorier. Uh, and then, kind of in reaction to that, part three is a kind of broad comedy. Um, but um, I mean, the plot line is, uh, I mean, obviously, part one, there were three people in the centipede, part two, uh, I aim for 12, but uh, only get 10. Then uh, in part three, uh, Tom just wanted to go completely over the top. I mean, everything about the film is over the top, it, it's, uh, hence it's so comedic. Uh, so there's 500. The, the stars the of the film are very different. <laughs> what was the difference in the directing style between... Centipede 2 and Centipede 3? Um, the, the difference in director style was more um, the fact that uh, logistic, the, the, the logistics were much more uh, to the fore in part 3. Because, I mean, part 2 we had a fairly small crew. Uh, it was only about sort of 20 actors in the cast. So, um, so yeah, and then moving on to part 3. You've got 150 extras. You've got uh, stars like Eric Roberts and Robert Lasado and uh, Tiny Lister and, and Brie Olsen. Uh, I'm unaware of her, her of until uh, <laughs> until working with her, but uh, but yes, apparently she's got quite a CV. Why do you think these films? Which isn't have... G-rated. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think these films have become so successful? Um, I, I think there's a there's the yuck factor uh, of the idea, the central idea, uh, and then there's the like most most kind of horror franchises are, are exactly that they repeat the same formula over and over again. Whereas I think with the Human Centipede films, there's a Human Centipede film for whatever tastes 
you know, you, know, you want. I mean, part three is certainly a kind of uh, crowd uh, pleasing beer and pizza film. It's a, a broad comedy, and you can, and it, you, you know, there's nothing too explicit or. Uh, what what's explicit is more explicit in the kind of Farley Brothers comedy kind of way, you know. Um. They are remarkable in that, given how replete with cliches and convention mm -hmm. the horror genre is, yeah. the human centipede concept is completely original. Yeah. We've never seen anything like this before, certainly never seen anything this disgusting before. <laughs> and the fact that the films refuse to repeat themselves and in fact refer to themselves. Yeah. This is all a huge splash of originality yeah. in a genre that tends to be so replete with, you know, the same old formulas. Well, I mean, I think Tom borrows from kind of uh, uh, art, art films as much as exploitation films. And uh, uh, so it kind of steers, I think he steers away from the mainstream kind of horror films uh, so, you know, I mean, the first one, when you watch it, there's kind of elements of Saulo and 70s, uh, like, Euro crime thrillers, you know, uh, or George Spoo um, George Thusier's the, the Vanishing, because it's kind of set in that kind of German-Dutch border thing. And then part two is more like a midnight movie. It feels a bit like a razor head uh, or some kind of dark uh, Hungarian film by Bella Tarr or something like that. And the and the comedy that's in there is is very bleak and very uh, like a kind of Eastern European comedy kind of thing, and part three is is very much like a a Jack Hill film or or um, Turkey Shoot or something like that. Uh, it's got that kind of um, uh, grindhouse cheesiness, but at the same time. Uh, there's all this kind of meta referencing going on as well. So. How did you react? when you saw the film for the first time with a big crowd? Uh, part three, um, well, <laughs> the first time, I, ha I have to admit, I, I fell asleep. <laughs> I, I've got sleep. <laughs> I've got sleep. In my defence, I do have sleep apnea, and I had been awake for, like, 40 hours because I'd, I'd done uh, a music festival over the weekend with uh, a friend, with a uh, a band that I'm kind of working with, and then um, had to got back to my ho home about kind of midnight, and then six a.m. in the morning had to go, had to stay up till six a.m. in order to then catch a taxi to the airport and travel to L.A. and then you were tired. Yeah, okay. I was. I was very tired. That's okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> well, okay. How did you react the first time you saw the film? Fully uh, when conscious? I was awake. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, c because I'd seen kind of part of it. Uh, the, the first time around, I was uh, the first time around. I was kind of unsure about it, and then the second time around, it just made much more sense, much more. Um, it, uh, I mean, m much more sense in the in the way that Tom's kind of aiming for this kind of OTT and, and awkward uh, kind of. There's an awkwardness about it that he plays for laughs, kind of thing. It's remarkable because it's deliberately meant to look like a cheesy yeah. C grade yeah. horror film. But all the referencing in it to the previous film, mm -hmm. to South Park, yeah. etc., shows you that it's doing all this OTT stuff and all this sometimes <coughs> deliberately bad acting stuff mm -hmm. deliberately. Now, I want to uh, propose to you my reading of this film. Okay. I don't think Human Centipede 3 is a horror film. Yeah. I think it's a satire about economic rationalism. Because mm -hmm. your character, why is your character... <laughs> painted as a villain. He's an accountant with a job to do. Yep. He has a budget to work to. The prison is way over budget. He <coughs> needs to make savings. Yep. It actually, within the context of the film, and certainly in terms of the politician, played by Eric Roberts, it all actually makes quite good sense. One meal can effectively feed yeah, the entire people. prison population. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I mean, there's a serious side to that as well. It's like um, when we think of, of, of the, the Holocaust, we think of Hitler and his madness. Uh, whereas, you know, the final solution was designed by accountants and people in charge of logistics. It's, it's uh, that's what made it so kind of terrifying. It's the the banality of evil, and that's what what Dwight is. I mean, the the main uh, everyone kind of looks at um, 
Dieter Lazer's character, Bill Boss, uh, because it is so over the top and so, uh, I mean, it's kind of Dieter poking fun at his own kind of uh, acting in, in part one kind of thing, but uh, it's it's kind of um, brilliantly kind of operatic, shall we say, uh, and very some very quotable lines in that. But uh, um, so so that's what you're kind of people are kind of looking at that and, and see Dwight as the as all right, and then <laughs> until you realise what exactly is happening and what he's done. Yeah, so. it uh, it certainly it seems to be more a satirical film than a horror film. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. Lawrence, how do you um, participate in these tours? Are you being paid to come out here to tour, or are you out here on your own coin? Uh, I'm I'm not being paid. Um, I'm doing it because I, I like the films and I like meeting the fans, um, and uh, you know, basically, Monster Pictures have. Uh, paid for my flights and um, put, and accommodation. Although accommodation, you know, we're in somebody else's, we're in somebody's. When I arrived and went to Sydney, I was in somebody's house, and then in uh, in Perth, we're in somebody's house. So uh, uh, yesterday was the first time I was in a hotel. So. Right. <laughs> and are you generating a bit of income from these tours, selling autographed photos and so forth? Uh, well, s selling autographed photos, but it, it's just to make sure that I can pay my rent when I get back. Okay. <laughs> so, and yeah. Do you have other work lined up outside of... Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, when I... When I, uh, I mean, everyone kind of thinks that uh, because you make films, you're this kind of mega... Um, you're rolling in mega books. But it really is kind of uh, feast and famine. So uh, I'm doing a shoot on the 23rd, 24th, 25th, and that's a, a few scenes in a feature film that um, is directed by Kate Shenton, who did a documentary on tenter hooks about suspension, um, hook suspension. Uh, but she's doing this kind of fictional documentary, out of doing a fictional feature, uh, which is about uh, which is satire on the film world. It's a female director that's got a horror script, and uh, the producers insist she has a horror star, which is me, uh, who is completely wrong for the parts in the script. <laughs> so. Just finally, do critics matter? Uh, yes, they do. But um, but I think you you mean reviewers. Uh, I don't think reviewers matter. I think you know everyone's got an opinion. I think. Um, Often they review in the moment and not uh, as a kind of considered uh, crit critique, shall we say. Uh, so, uh, but critics might. I mean, critics uh, supposedly kind of look after the the theory and, and uh, you know, kind of take on board history and, and theory of a of a of a subject matter and uh, write about that. So, that would be my my opinion. Lawrence, thank you again very, very much. Thank you. Congratulations again on the film. There's that's it. Yeah, there's not going to be a fourth. There's not going to be any continuation with the series. No, there's not going to be any continuation. But what Tom's toying with is doing a four and a half hour edit of all three, so you go in and experience it like a a, a grueling thing. That's a good uh, idea. Thing. Would yeah. that require any reshoots or no, no, any but, extra but, work on your part? No, what it might involve is. Showing part two in colour. That mm. would be great. Well, everyone's been asking about it, but uh, yeah, I think I think definitively as a film on its own, part two is black and white. But as part of this th three parts uh, edits, then I think yeah, I think it, it was good. shot in colour and then yeah, yeah, leaks yeah, of colour. Yeah, I mean, that, all, all three were sort of shot in colour and then kind of treated, uh, it, you know, in uh, post production. So, uh, do you get do you get a piece of these movies? No, no, you just get no, no. a flat fee. I, I got a flat fee for uh, both films. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think I've got a. I've done nine nine feature films now. And I haven't got a, a piece of any of them. So it's something to talk to your agent about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they do yeah. a recut. Yeah, Make, that, that's the wonders of working in low budget filmmaking, though. That's uh, that's true. You know. <laughs> well, congratulations again, mate. Thank you.